All right, what's up, guys? Happy holidays. Chuck and Jayhawk here to bring you the uh, NBA Christmas slate information. Uh, so we have the model up here. We, the model is updated. Uh, shout out to Moose for pushing that through early. We don't have ownership projections yet, but we can kind of estimate where things are going to go. Um, starting right off the bat, we know that Philadelphia is uh, definitely going to be the most popular team on the slate. No Joel Embiid. And I was really worried because I didn't, I hadn't looked at the schedule yet, but Philadelphia is the fourth game of the day. So... Even if we don't end up playing those guys in our lineups, I think that we still want to start most of our builds with these guys. And then I'm not sure what kind of news we're going to expect. Like LeBron's questionable. Maybe AD's questionable. I'm pretty sure those guys are going to play on Christmas Day. Uh, but we'll have some flexibility to move off of them. Um, but Jayhawk, how are we doing? Doing good, man. Uh, best time of the year, uh, especially for NBA, man. All day games. How can you, uh, how can you go wrong with that? Yeah, this is my favorite DFS slate of the entire year. Um, it just It's the most fun, not necessarily that I do the best in, but it just something about it's kind of similar to the recent short NFL slates we've had where the games are over before the next one starts. And we it kind of just allows us to have complete information to make late swaps. Um, and so even if we don't get any kind of late news that changes the slate, uh, you know, if your lineup's doing very well and you have some lower owned guys in there, then we're probably going to want to switch those other guys over to Chalky. And if we're doing poorly and we're trying to squeak out a min cash, then we're going to want to get off those later Chalk guys and uh, you know and play some low on guys and just try to get those min caches in. And so we have a pretty good contest over on DraftKings. Uh, 750K prize pool, 200K to first, $25 entry. FanDuel has a similar one, the Santa Slam, uh, $12.25 cent entry. Uh, not sure what the prize pool is, but it's going to be a pretty good first place. And so... We have a lot to talk about, and as I said, I think the slate uh, starts with Philadelphia. And so, what are the main pieces that we're looking for here? Yeah, man, uh, Joel Embiid ruled out late today. Kind of a crazy piece of news. Um, not planning on Christmas. So, um, yeah, Tyrese Maxey, I think, is the number one um, overall play for Philly. Um, obviously, with no Embiid, he's going to be the main guy there. So, Tyrese Maxey, eight point six k, does seem a little bit too cheap. Uh, like him a ton on DraftKings and Fanduel. And then Tobias Harris at five point or is he six point six point four k? Um, Tobias Harris think thinks makes for you know phenomenal phenomenal play. And then Paul Reed um, at his cheap price point on both sides, I think is arguably the top center play on the slate. Yeah, and it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be wild because I'm expecting a couple of these guys, if not more than two, to come in fifty plus percent owned. Definitely Paul Reed. It's just kind of like he so he didn't start. Uh, the first couple games and bead was out, but then he did start uh, the previous one. And it's just if these sites knew that Joel Embiid wasn't playing when they created the pricing, I mean, I imagine Paul Reed would be upwards of 6K, if not a little bit more, right? Um, and so he's just an easy plug and play. I mean, center spot, uh, we'll get to the center spot later, other viable centers. So it's a little bit more awkward on FanDuel because we can only play one. But on DraftKings, uh, he just seems like the easiest play on the slate. And then, as you mentioned, Tyrese Maxey, He's too cheap with Joel Embiid out 8,600. He's probably too cheap even if Joel Embiid was in, to be honest. Uh, I know they're up against Miami. It's a lower total, uh, but he's one of the best plays on the slate. Same thing kind of along the lines of the other guys. I mean, DeAnthony Melton, 5,300 and 6K. Uh, Marcus Morris, I, I'm pretty sure he's going to be popular because we don't have great value on this slate. Pricing is kind of tight, but he's the one that I would want to get away from the most. I think I'd rather just pay a little bit more and take some shots on Kelly Oubre, regardless of if he starts or not. And then Tobias Harris has been awful lately, but then he put up a mega score uh, on the recent slate at like no ownership. And so just a lot of interesting stuff going on here. And then Pat Bev is going to be some kind of salary relief too, if he ends up playing. Um, are there any other teams that you think that we need to highlight before we jump into the positions? I don't think so. Let's highlight, actually, let's highlight Phoenix. I think Nurkic is out. Um, mm -hmm. Just go with it. Some of that news. Um, so. Yeah. So, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you're good. Go ahead. My, my uh, I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Bradley Beal's out, but maybe he was questionable. Um, we'll have to see in the morning for confirmation. We don't have him in the model right now, so I'm building my lineups tonight as if Bradley Beal is not playing. Uh, but with Nur no Nurkic, it's a little interesting because they did start Drew Eubanks last slate after we speculated that maybe it was going to beat Shemezi Metu again. And uh, Eubanks, he picked up two early fouls, but even in the time he was on the court, he was awful. Uh, Shemezi Metu came off the bench. He did okay. Um, but what are the main pieces we should be looking at for Phoenix? Yeah, man, I don't think there's any like play that is a must play from Phoenix. Um, everyone pretty appropriately priced. Um, obviously, the targets for me would be the bigs. Um, so uh, Chemizi Metu 
and Eubanks probably be the first two guys. Um, we did see Ozabuki. I don't know if we'll see this again, but played extended run. Um, wasn't sure they wanted to play big with Sabonis last game, but some, definitely something to monitor there. Um, and then, man, I wish they'd give Metu more minutes because he played like 10 minutes and smashed his, his value. So um, if he even plays 15, 20 minutes, like he'll crush that value at his price point. Yeah, thanks for mentioning uh, as a bouquet, right? Uh, he's not on the model, but he was the one that checked in at the center spot for Drew Eubanks. Uh, Chemezi Metu was relief of, uh, you know, maybe Kevin Durant or whatever, but they, yeah, I mean, as a bouquet, no one's going to play him. He's He should come in pretty low owned and he's a cheap enough price that the way that we were talking about Metu being the pivot off Eubanks or whoever, whoever comes off the bench, I guess, being the pivot to the starter, um, that's going to be... A, as a bouquet, right? Yeah, Yudoka as a bouquet. Um, and he's going to be a good spot. I mean, Drew Eubanks, I have a feeling, is going to come in at lowish ownership since he was awful last slate. But we do like big men against Dallas. Uh, I believe Derek Lively was questionable, so wait for confirmation in the morning on that. But he's a good price on both sites. And both of these guys, Metu and Drew Eubanks, having power forward eligibility on FanDuel is pretty big, I think. Yeah, man, right there with you. And like, no one's going to play him. So I think he makes a ton of sense as a, like, if everyone else in your lineup is chalky, um, cause you get instantly unique by playing Ozabuki. And this is the last game of the night. Um, and so, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you are trying to squeak out a min cash, I think that's a pretty good uh, pivot to get to. I mean, maybe Eubanks gets in foul trouble again and Ozabuki gets a uh, more extended run or something like that. But uh, now it wasn't one or the other. They did run looking at the rotations right now, and they did run Metu at center for a few minutes, but uh, for the most part, it was Eubanks or as a bouquet most of the game. Um, so let's go ahead and let's just jump into the position. So point guard, shooting guard, we obviously know Luka Doncic is going to be top of the model, put up a monster game. Uh, he's been a different player since he had a kid, and it's funny what that does. We saw this happen with Fred Van Vliet, and this dude is just putting up monster stat lines, and he's probably coming in under-owned every slate. I think I saw you mention that in the Discord. And so how do we feel about him against Phoenix? Yeah, man, uh, for some reason, Luca's price point has came down from uh, the past few slates. Um, really cheap price point. Um, he's my favorite uh, spend up on the slate. Um, 11.6 or 7K. I think he makes for a phenomenal play. Um, Phoenix, definitely a team you shouldn't be too scared of. And then obviously, no carry once again. So uh, yeah, give me all the Luka Doncic uh, tomorrow. And so one thing to keep in mind is there are, even though there's only five games, like we have some of the best studs in the NBA on this slate. Um, you know, other than guards, we have Jokic, uh, Bam Adebayo, LeBron, AD, Jason Tatum, um, Steph Curry, and so you know Giannis. Uh, so we do have to make a decision on who we play. But Luca is going to be right near the top of the list. And as we talked about, Tyrese Maxey is a little bit too cheap, and so I like kind of just mixing both of them up at the guard spot. And then we also have Devin Booker, Jalen Brunson, Damian Lillard, and Steph Curry. And I'm going to throw Jamal Murray's name in uh, into that stud tier. Uh, so which of these? Uh, <laughs> who from these? other studs are we most interested in besides Luca? Yeah. So um, I'm going to start out with one of my favorite. He's not really stud yet, but I think he's getting up to with his minutes. Uh, Jamal Murray, 7.4 K. Um, you know, after first, first look, I just think um, minutes are kind of ramping up kind of back into the Jamal Murray pre-injury. So uh, Jamal Murray, I think looks phenomenal at 7.4 K. Um, probably my favorite point per dollar play, point per dollar play after Luca and Maxi. So um, those three, probably my favorite overall spend up card plays on the slate. And I kind of wonder if uh, Jamal Murray is going to come in a little bit too low owned on Fandle. Uh, we'll see an up ownership update in the morning, but the 7,400 on DraftKings, uh, he's good to go. He's playing full minutes and he's been fantastic recently. It's a pace up game against Golden State with a 234 total. And the 7,400 in DraftKings, it's too cheap. But the 8K on Fandle, I'm wondering if people find it a little too expensive. You know, they're trying to get up to Luka, trying to get up to uh, just Tyrese Maxey. And so Jamal Murray should be a pretty solid uh, GPP play in this game. And uh, one of the other guys I wanted to highlight, Jalen Brunson, uh, up against Milwaukee. We really like targeting point guards against this Milwaukee team. And it's not that just that Damian Lillard is a poor defender, but... Uh, point guards just seem to put up massive fantasy scores against Milwaukee and Jalen Brunson's going to be in a good spot. I'm interested to see what his ownership ends up versus Julius Randle. I do think that we have more point guard options than we have at the power forward position. Uh, so I'd expect him to come a little bit lower. I think he's a pretty great GPP play, but really all of these guys are, I mean, Damian Lillard, we know he's capable of a big score, especially, uh, I believe they're playing in, 
in New York tomorrow and, you know, guys like to step up in that arena. Steph Curry, Steph Curry. Uh, he hasn't had like a blow up game recently, but it's Christmas, you know, uh, Steph loves Christmas and Devin Booker uh, on the other side of that Luka game. If you can find the value to game stack with, uh, you know, Luka and Devin Booker or Luka and Kevin Durant, I think that's pretty strong as well. Yeah, man, I uh, completely agree with that. Um, so. And then just scrolling down a little bit, some of these other, I don't know, mid to higher tier guards that we should be interested. Uh, Chris Middleton, Clay Thompson, who has completely turned it around. He looks like a different player than he did at the beginning of the season. Um, but Derek White is the guy that kind of catches my eye at 7,100 on DraftKings. I'm pretty sure they priced him up to almost 8K on the previous few slates. So I'm not sure why he's so cheap here. Um, and like I said, we have a ton of great options at the point guard position, so it's probably hard to fit him in. But he's one of the guys that stands out as a little bit too cheap to me. Yeah, man. Uh, obviously, uh, Tatum is back, but Kristaps is questionable too. So Kristaps is out. Should be more shot attempts for for Derek White as well. So yeah, great. Tons of great point guard options today. And then there was somebody else here. Um, you had mentioned Pajemski before we hopped on the uh, to record this video. Uh, Fifty five hundred on DraftKings. Talk to me about him. Yeah, man. Uh, Pajemski, one of my favorite uh, players, particularly on the Warriors. Just think he's super talented. Um, 5.5K just seems a little bit too cheap for him. I will note his range of outcomes are very uh, variant. So could easily go for 20, but he also has a ceiling if his shots are falling to go for 35, 40 plus. So um, going to be risky, but I like his upside point per dollar. And so a theme in this, uh, in the, for the rest of this video is going to be finding value where there isn't value. And uh, Pajemski at 5,500, like you just said, he has that ceiling. And so I think he's someone we should be very interested in. Uh, Andrew Wiggins is questionable for Golden State. And so we'll get to uh, Kaminga when we get to forwards. But it's just the point is there's a few more minutes to go around in the rotation for him. And then uh, Malik Beasley is the last guy that I want to mention here as uh, he's pulling in as a pretty good value option. Malik Beasley. Uh, it's not too far down the list, 4,900. We don't have many playable guys that we're super interested in under 5K. And so I think Malik Beasley, uh, again, boomer bust guy, but I think he's someone that we should be interested in. Yeah, man, definitely if he's hitting his shots, huge ceiling for Beasley. I like that call. And uh, as we can see from the top of the value, I mean, a couple of the guys that we really like, Jalen Brunson, Jamal Murray, Chris Middleton, uh, Grayson Allen seems to be near the top of the model pretty frequently. And at that mid 5K price, I, th I think he's going to be the pivot off of Pajemski. We'll have to see who comes in at higher ownership, but they're both going to be good plays. And then uh, Kelly Oubre, I mean, he hasn't really had a good game since he's come back from that weird injury that he had. But we haven't predicted for 28 minutes, and with no Joel Embiid, there's so much usage to go around, and we know that Kelly Ubre likes to shoot the basketball, so I think he's going to end up as a pretty good tournament play as well. And scrolling down some other guy, I mean, KCP is KCP. I have a feeling he's going to come in very low on. The 4600 price on DraftKings is very appealing. Uh, even with Jamal Murray back, you know, his role is the same. Hit some threes, get some steals, get a couple of rebounds here and there. Um, is there anyone else on this value list that you think that we should mention? We got to mention D'Anthony Melton, right? For, yeah, for right, right, yeah. Um, I think he's a little bit too uh, cheap. I know he's been kind of bad recently, but he's going to have the shots, right? No Embiid, going to take more shots. So uh, definitely very solid. Well, should be a solid play at 5.2K. And the other guys here, I don't know that we have to scroll down this deep into value. Like, I'm a little bit surprised Derek White is showing up so low in the value ranking for as cheap as he is. Uh, I mean, Jalen Brown's above him at 8,500, as he probably should be. Um, but uh, we'll see if we can find some value at the other positions. So moving on to forwards, as I mentioned, we have a lot of good forwards. But at the top, I think that there's more good guard plays than there are forwards. Uh, I say that we have Giannis, AD, LeBron, KD. Jason Tatum and Julius Randle, and then uh, Jimmy Butler, if you want to throw him in there. But who are the guys that stand out to you from here, uh, either for their price or just because uh, just they're they're going to be a good play? Yeah, so the first one that stuck out to me, obviously, the uh, Giannis with his reduced price point at 10.7K. Um, not a phenomenal matchup here against New York. Slower pace team, but um, just seems a little bit too cheap for Giannis. So don't mind him as a con contrarian elite spend up. And then Julius Randle, um, you mentioned Jalen Brunson. I think Randle in his own right is a phenomenal tournament play here. So um, those two probably the two that stick out to me the most, but um, yeah. Yeah, I've been a big fan of Julius Randle since uh, Mitchell Robinson is lost for the season. Very unfortunate. Uh, Jericho Sims, I believe, is also out. Is that correct? Yeah, Jer Jericho Sims is out. And uh, so they have Taj Gibson and they've been starting... Uh, 
Isaiah Hardenstein. And so we'll talk about Hardenstein when we get to centers probably, but the point is that there's just more rebounding opportunity for Julius Randle, more room for him to work in the paint. And so 8,700, he's cheaper than all of the other uh, studs up here. He's like rated a little bit lower than them by OF index, but uh, it's really hard to get to these, to all of these payups today. So Julius Randle, he's a good, uh, he's a good shout against Milwaukee, especially, I mean, two, uh, 242. That is the highest total on the slate. And so similar to Julius Randle, Giannis uh, against New York. I mean, power forward eligibility on both sites, 10,700 on DraftKings. I mean, it's just, it's dumb, right? Yeah, man. He, I mean, we've seen him as low as 11K, but now 10,700, like, what are they doing? <laughs> what are they doing? Yeah, it's like DraftKings fell asleep on the pricing, or they're just like, all right, we're just going to chop everyone by $500 or something. Like, Fandle, the pricing is very tight, and so it's a little tougher over there, but. I mean, 10-7 on DraftKings, and yeah, we can save a few hundred. We can play AD. Uh, LeBron seems to like to step up for Christmas, so I'm really going to like LeBron as a GPP play. And uh, KD, you know, like we mentioned, if we're trying to game stack that last Phoenix-Dallas game, you know, Kevin Durant's Kevin Durant. Uh, from these other guys, so Jimmy Butler is questionable for tomorrow. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to play. I mean, Joel Embiid's not there, and I don't know if he likes Joel Embiid or not. Maybe they're friends now, but playing against Philadelphia, his old team, uh, he usually seems to step it up a little bit against them. So we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, you mentioned Kristaps was questionable for Boston. Um, if Kristaps is out, we've seen some them do some weird things at center, but it should be a boost for Tatum, Brown, and uh, and even Derek White, right? Yeah, I mean, more shots for White. Um, and then Al Horford, he's priced up now. I think he just looks okay. If he was cheaper, I think I'd like him more, but a 6.1K seems like appropriate for him. And then from the mid-range plays, we already mentioned Tobias Harris probably will be the most popular mid-range play as he should be, uh, 6,400 and 6,200 on both sites. One of the few players who's actually priced cheaper over on Fandle than he is on DraftKings. And I'm pretty sure he was absolutely terrible the last two times that Joel Embiid was out, but we don't care about that. Um, he's a good basketball player. I mean, he had a blow up game in the previous one, even with Joel Embiid in. And so we're going to be interested in Tobias Harris. We play him without worrying about what he was doing in those last couple of games. Uh, Chris Middleton's in a similar price tier. I think he's a pretty good play. And then MPJ as well in that, uh, I think he's more GPP, more boomer busty than the other two guys, but he's going to be a pretty good mid range play as well. Yeah, man, right there with you, Tobias, probably my favorite play on the site after Luca. So uh, right there with you. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with that. Um, and it's just, it's so weird to see Marcus Morris showing up so highly on the OF index. I mean, if we start it by value, he's a number one play by a mile and it's disgusting. He's 4,200 and 4,100. I mean, Marcus Morris, it's like the other day we had both Morris twins as chalk on the, on one of those weird slates. And it's like, it's 2023. This shouldn't be happening, but I mean, the whole industry projects him for minutes. He's played 25 and 31 in the last game. And so they're clearly comfortable running him out on the court. Uh, maybe they run some small ball with him at center. We'll have to see what uh, Nick Nurse does. But I can't say he's a bad value play on a slate that we're really starved for good, cheap plays. Yeah, man, I think they start him here. We could see them start Paul Reed. But um, either way, I think both him and Reed are going to play tons of minutes Uh Tonight, so I really like Marcus Morris. I know, yeah, I know he's chalky, yeah, but value is very, uh, very much lacking on the slate. So I probably want all this eat. Yeah, it's it's funny because uh, I'm looking at the underdog news, and they actually have Marcus Morris projected at to start at center with uh, Kelly Oubre in there at the small forward position. So we'll have to see what they do, regardless of if Paul Reed starts or not. Uh, we're gonna like playing him. We're gonna like him slightly less if he doesn't start. Uh, but hopefully, we have that news. I mean. We probably won't have it before the first game locks since it's you know so many hours beforehand. But uh, we should have enough flexibility to make some adjustments in that case. And I think, like I said, we're still going to be interested in playing Paul Reed, but I think maybe we just play him a little bit less if he's coming off the bench. Uh, he still clearly has a higher ceiling than Morris. So. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just some other guys showing up as value. You know, Two mid-range plays, Tobias and Chris Middleton. I think we just try, try and find ways to play them if we can. Michael Porter Jr. showing up very highly here. And then uh, Derek Jones Jr., another guy who's a little bit too cheap on DraftKings, 4,900. Uh, it's not that he has a high usage or anything, but he seems to be the second in command when Kyrie Irving is out. Um, they don't like playing Jaden Hardy with Luka in, and he's kind of Luka's sidekick right now. It's not Grant Williams, and so Derek Jones is going to be a pretty decent value play as well. Is there anyone else standing out here that we should be interested in at forward? Um, I want to mention, I know you're a big Lakers fan, uh, Rui Hachimura at 5K. 
no one's – at least I don't think anyone's going to get there. I thought he was one of the more sneakier value plays. Um, just been playing more minutes, right? Um, not sure. I think he started two games ago. But when he gets minutes, man, he's a great fantasy point per minute guy. So I'm at 5K. I'm definitely going to be taking stops at Hachimura. Yeah, I don't know what Darvin Ham is doing, man. So Austin Reeves is already coming off the bench, and then he had D'Angelo come off the bench. We'll have to see if that continues tomorrow. Um, but even right now, the projected starting lineup is LeBron at the point, Cam Reddish, Torian Prince, Jared Vanderbilt, and Anthony Davis. And so uh, it's we'll, we'll have to see. Like I said, I expect LeBron and AD both to play. Uh, Cam Reddish is questionable, too. The other guys are all probable. And then Gabe Vincent, uh, he's out for like eight weeks, which is super annoying. But... Um, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what happens there if, with their starting lineup. It's gonna, it's probably gonna change a little bit. It's the third game of the day against Boston, um, and so just keep an eye on that. Uh, I don't know how much will be in the Discord on Christmas Day, but you know, someone's always there to answer questions, and at the very least, we'll have the uh, definite starting lineups in there. So, moving. Oh, and the last guy I want to mention, Jonathan Kaminga. If he continues to be in the starting lineup. These prices are definitely too cheap, 5600 and 5400 I expect him to be fairly popular, probably not as popular as Philadelphia guys, but uh, he's been fantastic. Uh, Steve Kerr likes him. Steve Kerr said something like, this is the best stretch that he's ever played in the NBA. So uh, Jonathan Kaminga, get another guy to keep on your radar. Definitely. Moving on to center. Uh, since we're already on value, I mean, Paul Reed is going to be a big talking point because we probably really won't know if he's starting until a couple games have finished. Uh, but 4,300 and 4,800, I mean, he's just, he's too cheap, right? Yeah, man. Even if he doesn't start, I still think I'm going to get to a ton of Paul Reed. So, um, yeah, it just seems way too cheaper. And then uh, the other value centers aren't really value, right? I mean, Brooke Lopez is near the top of the model every day, and he has that boom bust potential, of course. Uh, but Jokic and Jan is showing up this, this highly near the top of value. And Jokic, too, 10,900. Like, what are we doing? Yeah, that's a. I, that's a egregious price tag for uh, Mr. Jokic. <laughs> and um, I've talked about on stream before how Golden State, they haven't had the tendency to go as small recently, especially with Draymond out. And so there's no fear. Like Jokic is never going to get played off the court anyway. Um, and so Jokic being in the game is going to dictate who's in its center for Golden State. But I mean, Jokic and Giannis, these are like the payups. Jokic, Giannis, and Luka, they're just they're all too cheap. And so I think we should be prioritizing them, trying to fit in one other, I don't know, 9K-ish stud, and then uh, filling out the lineup with guys around 5K, 6K. Uh, really, the only other value showing up here are Zaya Hartenstein and Drew Eubanks, who we should both we should be interested in both. Like I said, Drew Eubanks may come in lower ownership, especially last game of the day. Uh, but his price is probably appropriate for having the starting role. Maybe he plays well, plays himself into a few more minutes. And then Isaiah Hartenstein, right around 6K. I think this is the appropriate price for him with the new role that he has now. And so especially with the power forward eligibility on FanDuel, uh, going to be big fans of him. And then one guy I wanted to ask your opinion on, Bobby Portis. Uh, 5,400 on DraftKings, 5,700 on FanDuel. We've seen some super blow-up games from him recently. We've also seen some duds. Um, is this a guy we should be interested in as kind of a salary relief? Yeah, man. Uh, 5.4K should be contrarian, especially with um, you know some of those other uh philly players around him uh, so i think i want to make a rule probably one of portis or Giannis. we saw the last time these guys played portis had a huge game Giannis having only 30 fantasy points so i think one exceeds what typically the other doesn't so um i think he's fine i just make that rule if i was uh building multiple lineups and that is the first game of the day. Um, so, I mean, we'll see if Bobby Portis has a blow up day. Maybe we can just chill on the rest of Christmas and not really worry about our lineups if we didn't play him. Uh, but we'll have to see what happens there. Uh, one of the other value guys I wanted to mention now, the sample size is pretty small and the model's not fully accounting for what he does. We only projected for 11 minutes, but Trace Jackson Davis has been fantastic. This guy was the 57th pick in the draft, and all the stuff I'm hearing about him right now is like, how did the league let him fall to 57 and get to golden state because they've been looking for a good center i mean Kevon looney solid enough dario saric uh he's a good bench guy but trace jackson davis looks like he could develop into you know a pretty solid guy for them to have uh with this kind of new core that they have you know in the last few years of steph curry's career uh 5300 and 6100 how interested are you in trace jackson davis yeah man uh i was confused when uh he fell off hard because at indiana where he played college ball um for college basketball DFS, he was the top of the salary every every slate. 
Um, he's a great point per minute guy. Uh, Steve Kerr's finally starting to give him run. Um, you know, it's, it's about time, but um, he's really solid. Um, I'm a little bit worried just in particular in this game because they are going up against Jokic. I could maybe see them putting Looney out there just a little bit longer. But, I mean, Jackson Davis is still going to play a decent chunk off the bench. So I think he's very, very much in playing tournaments. So we do have him projected for 11 minutes. He's played, uh, you know, obviously more than 11 minutes of the last few games in a row. And only one of them, uh, he got some extra time because of blowout. The rest of these games are fairly close. I mean, Washington, 11 points. It's fairly close. Six points, uh, four game, four points against Portland. Uh, but one thing that stood out to me, just scrolling down the box score, is the last time they played Denver, he did play 18 minutes. And while he only put up 12 fantasy points, uh, it's pretty significant. I mean, he picked up 4,000 in those 18 minutes, which makes sense. He's probably had to guard Jokic a bunch. Uh, but it just Steve Kerr is very comfortable playing him. And this 5,300 price, it might be kind of weird to look at him because you know we're used to seeing him as a mid-price player that we're never interested in. But it just his role is different, and I'm pretty sure the entire industry is going to be under-projecting him in terms of minutes anyway. Uh, and so I think he's a fine GPP play. Uh, you know, especially, especially uh, what is this, the second game. So Golden State plays in the second game, um, and he's a similar price to another guy we just talked about, Bobby Portis. Uh, but I mean, they both have power forward eligibility and Bobby Portis should be more popular. I'm not sure if he actually will. I wonder if the field is kind of, kind of chase this, but Trace Jackson Davis, I think he's going to be a pretty decent mid range play as well. Definitely like him a lot. Starting by OF index, um, you know, Julius, we probably want to play in the power. All these guys, we probably want to play in the power forward spot. Um, you know, Paul Reed, I'm pretty sure he's going to take up a lot of my center spots, most of them anyway. We have Jokic as just way too cheap, who's probably going to take up a bunch of the other center spots. Uh, but some of the other true centers that we're interested in, Hartenstein, uh, I mentioned Eubanks possibly as a bouquet, but I think we reserve as a bouquet as like a, uh, you know, if we're desperate to try to min cash and then we just make some swaps at the end. Uh, but are there any other centers you're looking at? I know you mentioned Al Horford earlier. Yeah, Horford. I mean, if Chris Hubbs is out, like, he's fine at 6.1K. Um, don't love it, don't hate it. Um, that definitely in play, though. Um, one guy whose ownership just blows my mind every slate is Jared Vanderbilt. And he's cheap. Like I said, we don't have a lot of cheap guys, and Jared Vanderbilt is starting. But his rate of fantasy production is just it's bottom tier. Um, and so I've just been Xing him at like, I'm a Laker fan, right? And I've just been Xing him out of my player pool every day, uh, center only, especially it's just, it's so tough. Like we can pay 200 more for Paul Reed. So I don't think he's necessarily going to be popular tomorrow. He has been popular the last couple of, uh, or at least the last slate anyway, but since he's come back from injury, um, I think people are just playing him too much and yes, it's possible that he has a blow up game, but I just, I'd rather play basically. I mean, I feel like I'd rather play, uh, Marcus Morris at this point. Yeah, definitely trying to see it let's start by Fandle value i mean brick lopez top of Fandle value most days and it's just that block potential is huge right three points for a block and yeah, he could have seven eight blocks in a game yeah man he uh he can load up those blocks and seals i've seen it multiple times so um definitely don't mind him in tournaments uh I prefer hardenstein on the other side but he's definitely a play as well yeah, that's the thing. It's like uh, Hartenstein, he kind of, he doesn't have the ceiling that Brooke Lopez has, but I think he's going to hit his median score, maybe slightly higher than that, a little bit more often than Brooke Lopez. Um, and so Brooke Lopez, I'm pretty sure is going to come in lowish owned. And so he's going to be a pretty solid GPP play though. Um, are there any other players that you want to talk about before we go ahead and build a quick dummy over on DraftKings? Oh, not really. I just wanted to mention Hachimura because I know you're a Lakers fan. I did see the minutes go up, so I was like, no one's going to play him. Um, maybe consider him. I don't know. One of the games, I think LeBron was out, but even the last game he played, what, 33 minutes? Like, that was crazy. Um, so we haven't predicted for 20 and a half minutes. Uh, the one thing I'll say about Hachimura is there's games where this guy will come in, spark the offense, uh, get us back in the game in the fourth quarter and then Darwin Ham will just pull him and go and close with whoever he wants to close with. And so we could get hammed uh, by Hachimura, but I, I don't mind that as a GPP, GPP play though. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Definitely risky. Um, all right, let's go ahead and build a dummy. I think we should start the lineup with Paul Reed. Yep. hundred percent. And then of the other Sixers, who are you most interested in? Definitely Harris. I think at the mid tier for sure. Let's plug in Harris, and then uh, this is something we were discussing a little bit before the show, too. I mean, how many Philadelphia players is appropriate for this slate? I mean, it's a five-game slate. 
but we have all the studs here and playing a couple of these underpriced guys really helps us get to some of those studs. Um, do you have an idea of how many you're going to limit it to or what you're trying to do there? Um, I don't know if I want five because I don't know if five could get there, but probably three to four, four, four probably max for me. Yeah, I think I agree. I'm going to limit it to four, try to keep most of my lineups at three max. Um, could be Paul Reed, Tobias Harris, and then one of Max or Melton. Maybe if I'm playing Melton, I'll have a Jalen Brunson who's at a similar price point as Tyrese Maxey. But I mean, Tyrese Maxey without Joel Embiid, like we saw huge minutes for him in the last few games. They've been missing some guards. Patrick Beverly, uh, DeAnthony Melton missed a game. Um, but even without those 40 minutes, I mean, we've still, I mean, okay. So we've still seen 38, 39, 41 minutes, even when everyone's there. Uh, and 8,600 is just a little bit too cheap for Tyrese Maxey. So um, but who's who's the third sixer that you want to plug in here? Uh, is it Marcus Morris? Yeah, I hate to say it, but probably Marcus Morris. Yeah, <laughs> I, I hate like taking up this many forward spots, but like it could we could go Maxi too. I mean, I'm down for either one. All right, let's go ahead and throw Maxi in at the point guard spot, and then from the other games, who's like the first player that you're thinking about? Mm, that's tough. I've this is tough. I gotta think about it. Um. I like Hardenstein a lot, but I don't really want to. If we're already going to read, do we want a double center? Is that you okay with that, or do you want to go different different spot? So it's not a slate that I'm going to force double center, but I think I'm naturally just going to get to a lot of lineups with double center. Um, going to have some Hardenstein. Uh, I think my second highest exposed center after Paul Reed though is actually going to be Jokic. Uh, do we okay. want to try to fit him or Doncic in here? Yeah, let's do that. I'm fine with either one. I'm I'm gonna plug in Jokic for now since he's a little bit cheaper and see where that leaves us in terms of salary forty nine fifty. Um, so some of the other cheap guys that we talked about, I mean, Pods at fifty five hundred, it's not really super salary relief, but kind of helps us fit some stuff in. And like I just said, he does have that uh, ceiling potential in a game where if it's a tight game, Steve Kerr is just letting him play. I mean, thirty two minutes, twenty nine. He had sixteen. Uh, I think this was the game he got hurt. Could be mistaken, but. I mean, if we can count on 30 minutes from a 5,500 guy, I don't mind that. And then 4,700 at the other positions. Let me just take a look at the uh, model and just see overall. I mean, Marcus Morris, Tobias Harris, Jalen Brunson, Chris Middleton. These are like the actual top of value for all positions. And so seeing Jalen Brunson up here, uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm a little bit disappointed that Tyrese Maxey is so low compared to him. So it's something to consider. Jalen Brunson will come in at lower ownership than Tyrese Maxey. Um but who else should we plug in here? I mean, I mentioned Malik Beasley, but I don't really want to put him in our dummy lineup. Uh, he is a GPP play, though. Yeah, I would say Melton, but we already have Maxi, so I don't know if I want to go Melton in Maxi. Maybe we could go... Um, we already played... Can we try to fit in Chamal at 7.4K, or is that pushing too much? I just don't think we're going to be able to because um, there's there like there's only a couple players under 4K that we can expect to play today. Um, it's just going to leave us a little too light. I mean, we could put Jamal in instead of Tyrese Maxey, and then we could plug in uh, DeAnthony Melton. Yeah, let's look at that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Saves us a few hundred dollars. Uh, 5100 for small forward and forward position. I mean, we have a few options in this tight price range. Uh, Kelly Oubre, Grayson Allen. Uh, Jonathan Kaminga, I mentioned at 5,600 is pretty good. Uh, I think it's okay to play him with pods, but since we have pods in the dummy already, I'm going to try and find someone else. Do you want to just go ahead and do that? We'll just put in uh, yeah. Kelly Oubre or maybe Derek Jones Jr. Yeah, that's fine. Um, we let's have two Derek Philly. Jones. Yeah, let's do Derek Jones, actually, since we already have three Philly players. Um, okay. Leaves us 5,300. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Trace Jackson Davis, uh, the GPP player, right? No, I love that. Especially like if there's no Wiggins, like Pods, Jackson Davis, and Kamingo all are gonna look better. So um, love that. I'm not really gonna set a rule for you know max two of this group, Pods, Jackson Davis, and Kamingo, just because that's kind of a weird rule. But I feel just intuitively, I don't really want more than two of them in the lineup. Uh, but it could work out. Um, you know, weird things happen. Especially we have Jokic in here, uh, Jokic and Jamal Murray. So actually, let's take Jokic out and let's see if we can make this lineup work with uh, Luca in there instead. <clears throat> 4,800 for the forward position. I mean, Prince, uh, he's been okay. And we might ne not necessarily need a full 5X from every player. If it, this is the last guy in, it helps us make the rest of the lineup. I mean, Grant Williams, Dario Saric, uh, is anyone else here at all appealing to you? 
Um, yeah, not really. Marcus Morris at four point one, but yeah, I like Prince in tournaments. I I really do feel like one of these cheaper forwards for the Lakers has a good game. Um, mm-hmm. Not sure if it's gonna be Hachi, Prince, or Reddish, but I feel like one of these guys has a solid game. So you guys see, this is kind of like a. You know, we gave you a couple different looks. Uh, it's not a bad way to start your lineup, so, but I do think it's definitely going to start with the Philadelphia guys and then plug in those guys first, see what kind of salary it leaves you. Um, you know, maybe pick one of the other studs you want to play, pick a couple mid range guys and just, uh, you know, just play around with it, see what you get. But you yeah, have any uh, final words before we get out of here? Uh, not really. Uh, going to be playing a lot of Luca and uh, enjoy the games tomorrow. I mean, it's going to be really, hopefully, a fun slate. We're winning a lot of money, enjoying time with the fam. And, uh, yeah. Yep, nothing better than sweating NBA and NFL yeah. on a Christmas Love Day it. with the family, right? Love it. And NFL, like, they had to, to mark their stamp. They were tired of just NBA uh, going all day. They're like, hey, guys, it's our turn, too. <laughs> and it's funny because those of us with uh, best ball sweats left, like, a lot of the best players are playing tomorrow. And so – even though all the games are done for you know Christmas Eve the night before when we're recording this video, uh, lots of stuff to uh, lots of stuff to sweat on a Christmas day. So have a good holidays, everybody. Thank you for watching. <clears throat> uh, I personally won't be in the Discord that much tomorrow. I'll be in there before lock, though. Uh, you know, if you have any questions about ownership or if something changes, um, so just go ahead and join. There should be dis- uh, instructions in the description below. And uh, like I said, even if it's not me or Jayhawk in there, someone's usually in there too. You know, just help out the members. We're a pretty good community. So appreciate you guys. And we will see you, uh, I guess, tomorrow. We have a regular slate on Tuesday. So thanks. See you guys. Merry Christmas.